Welcome to the Wise Idea Weekly Podcast with Christopher J. Harris, focusing on life, leadership, family, marriage, and the church. We are providing tools for our inspiration and wisdom for life. Our goal is to inspire everyday people to live wise lives. If you're new to us, we release a brand new podcast weekly on Thursdays. Thank you for tuning in for this week's episode. Here's our host, Christopher J. Harris. Well, hello, my friends. Welcome again to another episode of the Wise Idea Weekly Podcast. I am your host, Christopher J. Harris. And uh, you know what? I think y'all may take it for granted when I say this, but please know that uh, with every fiber of my being, I mean it. I am so excited to have you guys tuned in every single week. And uh, it is such a joy of mine to know that people are being inspired and encouraged and motivated um, and able to really get uh, incredible content, not just because it's my podcast, but man, the guests that we're having and the conversations that we're having are absolutely amazing. Last week, we started a conversation talking about how to prepare for the new year. And we started talking about habits and things that we need to be thinking about in terms of our lifestyle, uh, whether that's spiritually, mentally, relationally, physically, financially, uh, the whole gamut. And uh, we had our guest on, Bishop Lester Love, and he came back because we had so much that we were talking about that we had to come bring him back for a part two of this conversation around habits for a new year and how to think about our lifestyle and lifestyle adjustments and changes that, in fact, we need to make. So... I want to invite you, please, you want to get your journal out, get a pen out, get a notepad out. Uh, Do something that you'll be able to write down uh, some of what you're about to hear because we're getting ready to go deep. You're jumping in on part two of the conversation. So if you did not hear part one, you want to go back and listen to part one and then jump in here to part two. It's an incredible conversation. It challenged me on multiple levels, and I know that it's going to probably challenge you as well. So... Let's jump back in, part two of our conversation about habits for the new year. Every day, walk. One of the worst things they ever told us to do was run. That's the worst exercise of all time. Running is the worst exercise? The worst. Your ankles, your knees, your shoulders, your back. You ain't been designed to take that. It's the worst thing you can do. Do some yoga, swim, lift some weights, stretch. You got, a little, you got a little controversial just then, Bishop. You say do some yoga, but we'll we'll have to do that. We'll have to do that uh, conversation another time. Father, forgive us for we know not what we do. Um, wow. All right. So, so you said, so you talked about the rhythms in the morning, uh, flipping it over from night, morning, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, meditation, journaling, praying, quiet time. Um, the nuances of that, uh, getting your brain activated uh, mentally. Um, you talked about some of the physical stuff. Um, <clears throat> we didn't talk about relational and we didn't talk about financial. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I'd love to do really fast, though, before, Bishop, before we get into that relational and financial, who, who are some authors that you, you've been able to read that deals with some of the things that you've just dealt with? Because... And, and I know you read a lot, but here, here's one of the questions I want to ask is, as a pastor, how do, you, how do you encourage your folks to read in on this stuff without going off on the deep end? Uh, because some of the things that you've talked about, there's material out there, but it's not biblically based. So how do we, how do we deal with that? What's not biblically based? So, so for example, um, I, I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure that the Christian community has caught up with the conversation around meditation. You talked about that earlier, right? So, so we say, you know, we say in the traditional context, we'll say prayer, um, or we'll say prayer and meditation. But what you just talked about, you talked about breathing in through your nose and 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 that kind of thing. Um, where where would a person, a a Christ follower? find biblically relevant material and content that speaks to that? Now, first of all, it's all in the Bible. It's all in the Bible. The Bible says, um, I, get, I, I ran off for several scriptures. Be still and know that I am God. 
started to be quiet. Da David, and David was a, was a disaster, right? He was a disaster. He was a disaster. He was a, he was a deviant. He was a, he was, so history bears out David died with a venereal disease, okay? David was a mess, okay? But he loved God and he repented and he was an apple of God's eye because when he made a mistake, he said, I'm sorry, okay? But David was running from Saul, right? Saul trying to kill him. 23 times Saul tried to kill David. And he runs off into a place called the Cave of Adullam, okay, to get some rest, to sleep, get a, get a break. And he goes there to get a break, gets into the cave, he looks up at the, at the portal of the cave, there's 600 people found him, men. And the Bible says that everybody was in debt, everybody was discontent, and everybody was distressed. Because when you got the it factor, you attract needy people. Right? Quit fussing about it. they too needy. That's why God gave it that anointing. He takes these people now and he's on his way climbing the mountain. Now, this kind of teaching only for people who want to go to the next level. He's climbing the mountain on his way to Psalm 150. Okay? He gets to about Psalm 133 and says, I got all these people on my back. They ain't coming to help. They come with their hand out. They have no money. They're stressed out and unhappy. I got my own flesh that I'm worn with because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fleshly disaster. I got Saul trying to kill me. I got so much on my mind. He says, quiet my soul. My soul needs to be quiet. When the children of Israel were marching around the walls of Jericho, God told them, don't talk. He was training them to be quiet. Paul came back in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11 and said, study to be quiet, work with your own hands that those who are without can walk honestly towards you. Be still shh, and you will know that I am God. There's one set of teachings that said in the quiet years of Jesus, he went to India. He broke off away and how can you talk and hear at the same time? It's impossible. Meditate day and night. Many times we have a tendency to demonize what we don't understand. If we don't understand it, we don't like it, we won't study it, we'll demonize it. So, so if, I'm, if I'm listening to this, Bishop, <clears throat> um, you know, part of the, 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 part of the, the role of, of the interviewer, the podcast host, Mm -hmm. uh, I believe is also to be a listener. I'm listening as 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 if I would be listening to the to podcast myself, which I do. I listen to my own podcast, mm -hmm. um, and I'm uh, in my mind. I'm riding in my car listening to this, and I'm saying, "Man, this is all deep stuff, man, and it's so much." And, and and I know we asked the question, "Where do we start?" But I think part of the answer you said this without saying it is that we've got to start being intentional about everything we do and everything we think that we got to get off an of autopilot and really start thinking like, okay, why, why am I doing this this way? Where did I get this from? What, you know, what's my thought process there, et cetera, et cetera. Would, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, first of all, any real change agent is not understood in the time that he lives or she lives. Um, we just let life happen to us so often. Um, and we don't dig any deeper than what somebody else told us. Um, but I think, as you said earlier, you have to be intentional. You, you taught me. You can't take anything for granted. It, the little things, you can't take them for granted. And we have to study to show ourselves approved, right? Six is the number of man. So there's six ways that God communicates with us and I communicate with God. It is through the hearing of God's word that I develop faith. It's through the study of God's word that I show myself approved. It's through fasting, prayer, generosity, and solitude, the way I plug into God. I have to master those concepts. And sometimes I have to dig into the minds of people that, that took the concept from us, because all things are inspired by the word of God, inspired by God, 
took them, perfected them, made millions of dollars on them, and then we discount them because we didn't come up with them. I don't agree with that. I think it all comes from God. If I can, and once I find it in scripture, I'm in all the way. But then I sometimes have to study other people, other masters, to get a clearer concept on something that came from God that they did better than we did. So, so we have to redeem it. We have to redeem it back for the cause of Christ, or redeem it back for biblical, biblical, uh, for the glory of God. Absolutely, absolutely. If I can find it in the Word, I'm in all the way. Why did he tell him march around the wall and be quiet? You that close because you close to your problems. You got to be able to hear, be aware, develop a, a Christ awareness, a Christ. Let this mind be in you, a Christ consciousness. We more enamored with the with the person of Christ and the principles of Christ. The principles are more important, more important than the person. Buddha wow. had the Christ consciousness. Gandhi had the Christ consciousness, the mindset of Christ, how he thought, how he behaved, how he responded. I learned more from Christ in his suffering than I did through his miracles. How to deal with enemies, how to deal with people, how to pray. He taught us everything. But we have to stop looking at it just from our li a limited scope of what we think Christianity is based on what somebody else told us it was. Now, I think you, I think you just uncovered something really heavy, Bishop, because I, uh, I've been reading lately and thinking about this idea of how much, how, how off we are in our approach to God and to Christ, because unfortunately, I think the byproduct of, of the way that we have done church or done discipleship um, has been transactional um, versus an engaging relationship that yeah. that becomes fluid. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. Is this um, God is not a transactional God; He's a relationship God. Everything about God is in relationship. Everything, and I just think we need to think about it uh, and, and change the way we think and process the Christ consciousness. Everything in your body is a chemical reaction in your brain. Everything. Everything in your body is a, I don't care if a person is paralyzed. It's a chemical reaction in the brain. The brain is saying, okay, that don't work anymore. It has nothing to do with the muscle. It's everything to do with the brain. And when, if you change the brain, you change the whole body, you change the whole life. We need to think differently in order for us to be different. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I've been, I've been doing a deep uh, study uh, with Dr. Caroline Leaf um and and just 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 the, the acquiring of the understanding that the mind can teach the brain to rewire itself is absolutely. oh my goodness absolutely the guy by the name of dr joe dispenza uh, that, that has a book called becoming supernatural he talks about a woman by the name of anna 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 is at home one day she gets a knock on the door they come and tell anna that her husband has committed suicide. She goes into shock immediately, all right? She goes into a, a, an immediate shock, an adrenaline rush comes in, right? Her amygdala releases a chemical to, to make, her, make her more sharper and, 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 and make her tense up and get ready for an attack, okay? And the challenge with that is, it's like, it's like acid. It helps her, all right? A little acid will clean something. A lot of acid will destroy it. And every time she remembered that event, it released that same amount of adrenaline. And she kept releasing it over and over and over and over again until she developed paralysis, cancer, and depression. True story, okay? Because she kept thinking about what happened to her negatively over and over and over and over again. She gets an adrenaline, but she actually now doesn't understand. She's addicted to the adrenaline rush because ad adrenaline is addictive. It makes you feel good, it makes you more alert, it makes you more power, make you feel more powerful. People have had adrenaline rushes and the kid got into an accident and the car came on them and they picked the car up, right? Adrenaline would make you do that. But she kept thinking about her past over and over again. She developed paralysis, cancer, and depression. She made up in her mind one day she would do two things. She would never rehearse the past. Look at the word rehearse. Rehear, see. If you rehear it, you're going to see it in your own mind. It's going to create the whole thing again. Rehearse. She kept rehearsing it over and over again until she became what she thought. She became what she thought. She developed paralysis, cancer, and she became depressed. She said, I'm not going to rehearse the past again, and I'm going to start meditating. Why? Because meditation rewires the brain. It makes you what? Present, which is one of the names of God. Present. 
Jehovah Shammah. I don't know why we use those, but that's where they talk. He's present. I'm now. Here and now is the only time that matters. Now, her cancer is healed, her, her paralysis is gone, and depression is leaving, and now she's teaching other people the power of being in the present moment. Now. The only time that's true. Now. So, so it sounds like you're saying, it, it sounds like you just resolved a debate. Because one of the debates has been, is addiction a habit or a disease? And it sounds like you're saying that addiction is a habit. It's a, yes, of course it is. It's a chemical reaction in the brain. Every addiction, emotional addiction, pornography addictions, drug addictions, is a chemical reaction in the brain that can be changed. But it's easy for me to give you a drug because drug, drug is big business. You know? big medicine is big business. Medicine, when, when, when Hippocrates, the father of medicine, said, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. But then he came back and said, if you want to heal somebody, ask them, are they willing to give up the things that make them sick? If they're not, you're wasting your time talking to them. Don't cast your pearl before swine. Wow. All right, Bishop, we got to talk about this relational and financial. Uh, because this, this, is, this has been a, a linchpin and a stumbling block in, in many communities for centuries and decades. Um, let's, let's deal with the relational first. Why, why, why are people, why do we have so much drama in our relationships and so many broken relationships and families in disarray and, you know, just all of that? I want to simplify it as much as I can. Okay? Simplify it as much as I can. Um, I wish I could go here. Um, one challenge, one, major, one of the major challenges in relationship is a simple word called ego. It's the root of it is pride, then it goes to ego, then it goes to arrogance. Okay? I'm, I'm studying a book right now, I studied one before this, um, before this meeting uh, called Disarming the Narcissist. Okay? Um, ego uh, is the main reason, because ego makes it about me. When in relationships, it really should be about the other person. If you make it about the other person, not about you, it'll dispel a lot of problems that we have, a lot of issues that we have. Um, so I think the main problem in challenging relationships, if we look at it, I can, we can trace most of it back to ego. So how, so how, do, we, how do we find that balance between uh, self-care, looking out for ourselves, taking care of ourselves, while while not being selfish um because first of all i don't want balance balance infers that there's going to be a struggle it's always a struggle when you're trying to find balance i want harmony i want flow i want to i want ebbs and flows um I, I want to understand something i want i want to come come be clear to understand this when it comes to um relationships and when we're talking about relationships you're going into love hate right Basically, it's love, hate, like, dislike, which is, for, which is a grayer version of love and hate. It's actually two sides of the same thing. Love and hate are the same thing. It's just two sides of the same thing. Okay? When does love turn into hate? When does good turn into bad? It's all, it's all one thing. So it's not about me. It's got to be about me wanting to understand you. And if I take my time, if we do this to each other, There'll be no problems. If I did everything I could to make you happy in a relationship and you do everything I can to make me happy in a relationship, all this other stuff will go away. But when I start pointing it, pointing it towards myself, now there's a problem. And ego, excuse me, pride comes in, then ego, then arrogance. And when you get to arrogance, nobody can deal with you anymore. So what do you, what do you mean when you say it's the, it's the same thing, Bishop? Love, love and hate are the same. What does that mean? It's two sides of the same thing. It's, it's one, it's a coin, like a coin. A coin is not two coins, it's two sides of the same coin. It, they look like they're opposite, but they're actually the same thing. It's just oh. two sides of the same thing. How? They're just polar opposite. They're just, they're on different poles. When does love turn into hate? You, nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's a degree. It's all degrees. The degrees of love, degrees of hate. It's all degrees. It's all the same. It's all the same. When is black turning to white? When is up turning to down? It depends upon where, where you, where the position you're looking at it from. All degrees. Think about it. When, when does good turn into bad? 
It depends upon how you look at it. It's all it's two sides. It's called the law of polarity. That's what it's called. Look it up. So, so Bishop, if somebody is listening to this, if they are a Christian, um, we already talked a little bit about this whole redeeming it back for the kingdom, but you've, you've talked about the supernatural, the spiritual polarities. Are you saying that a lot of what our world has called, quote unquote, spiritualism is actually biblical principles that have been snatched away from the word of God? Absolutely. They stole it from us. Let's look, let's look at something called The Secret. Remember when The Secret was out? Yes, sir. And oh my God, they all demonized The Secret. Oh, The Secret was so bad. The Secret is a combination of three scriptures. The blessings of the Lord will pursue you and chase you down. And as a man, two scriptures. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. They, they, they married two scriptures together and made a movement out of them. It's, it's all in the word. It's amazing. You're it's amazing you say that, Bishop. I was having a uh, having lunch a few weeks ago with a friend uh, who's who's a, a business person. Um, they're not faith at all. They're not churched or anything like that. And uh, having an incredible conversation, he asked me, um, "Had I read this particular book?" Mm -hmm. And I said, "I hadn't read it yet, but I heard about it, and I read the summary of the book." He's like, man, you got to read this book, this story about this guy named David and taking Goliath out and da 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 and I, and I started laughing. He said, what are you laughing at? I said, you do know that's in the Bible, right? He's like, quit joshing me. That was his exact phrase. <laughs> He's like, quit joshing. I said, no. I said, if you, if you read, have you ever heard about a guy in the Bible named David? He's like, no. I don't, I, he's like, I don't read the Bible. I said... I said, a huge portion of the, New, the Old Testament is built around this guy by the name of David, and really his life turned when he defeated Goliath. He said, yeah, that's what, that's what this story is about. Yeah. I said, okay, got it. So it, it just sent me on this mental exercise for a few days afterwards saying, man, how much has the enemy stolen that refuses to attach God's name to it, even the rainbow. But that's another conversation, too. Let, 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 you know, here's, here's the challenge. The challenge is this. If we spent more time finding out how we are alike versus at war or how we are different, we'll be surprised how much we are just alike. Wow. Fighting about why we're different. So, so this, so this relational success um, habits that you just talked about starts with this notion then of becoming emotionally healthy enough to not have such a huge ego that we're in competition with the other person, but we're willing to serve them and love them and and all of that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, man. Yeah, you know. I don't have to like everybody because I have to love everybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm commissioned to love you, but I ain't commissioned to like you. But I don't have to like you to love you. I just love you, no matter what. Here's one of the main things, the main challenges, that one of the main answers. Just start looking for the good in everything and everybody. Look for the good in everything and everybody. No matter what it is, you'll find the good. In every, you find the good, you find the God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. You find the good in everything and everybody, life would be so much easier for you. When you surrender to the fact that, okay, this person is, this person is different from me, just surrender to that. They're different from me, all right? But I, they don't have to be me in order for me to like them or love them. You let them be themselves. So, Bishop, somebody, somebody, would, somebody could argue or may argue the point if they're listening to this. Is this semantics? Is loving and liking, is that semantics? Or, or is loving and liking actually two different things? They're two different things. Um, because I, I don't, sometimes there's some behaviors that I don't like, but it don't mean I don't love you. Some be, you know, I don't like people being mean and hateful to people, but it don't mean I don't love you. I love you, but that's wrong for what you did. Two different things. Okay. It, it, do you think that that conversation around loving and liking is one of the reasons why the church is struggling with certain cultural conversations today? You know, you know what? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, again, we just, whatever, whatever is not us is wrong. 
We we gotta be we can't be that narrow minded. Wow. It can't be that narrow. If it's not my way, based on what I was taught, uh, without doing some real in-depth study, even when it comes to the scriptures, then let, let, let me take a look at it. Let me be let me be a little more open and take a look at it more carefully versus just taking what somebody else told me. Because much of what we say we know is what somebody else told us. We didn't study it ourselves. You know, I just had the thought, Bishop, while you were talking, with everything that we've said over the last uh, last little bit that we've been talking, this, this is not for the mentally, spiritually, um, emotionally lazy person. If, if, this, if you're going to do this and this is going to work, you can't be lazy with it. You can't be lazy with anything if it's going to work. Um, there's a great book called Emotional Intelligence 2.0, one of the best books I've ever read in my life. It helped me to understand people, helped me understand me a little bit better. One thing I learned um, through, through that books and, and others is that what I cannot stand about other people is normally a reflection of who I am. Gee whiz. But I hate it. I just can't. So it's something I may not like about you. Uh, but if I just can't stand it in you, it's something to me I have not dealt with. Because my perception of you is a reflection of me. Wow. That's so good, Bishop. That's so good. All right, there you have it again. <laughs> this incredible, amazing conversation, so rich, with so much wisdom, so much insight, as we're talking with Bishop Lester Love on habits and lifestyle adjustments for the new year. Y'all, this is such rich content. And, you know, I, I, I was challenged a little bit because I wanted to be able to provide all the answers in the podcast. But the more that I listened and the more that he talked and the more that we dialogued, I realized that this one conversation could not be the end all be all of everything that we need to be thinking about in terms of adjusting our lifestyle and having uh, great habits for a new year. So look at the show notes, email us, social media, contact us, contact us on social media. Um, just do whatever you got to do so that you can get off of autopilot and all of us let's win together in every area as you know this conversation we've been talking about what it means to grow spiritually and have healthy habits mentally and relationally physically financially the whole gamut the whole nine yards and i'm so appreciative for these kinds of conversations because it's just so it's so stimulating guys it's so stimulating and in fact, uh, we'll have Bishop Love. He's going to come back. We're going to close this conversation out next week for part three of this conversation about habits and lifestyle adjustments for the new year. So uh, I'm sure you've got a page full of notes and things that you're thinking about, things that you have been challenged with through this conversation. I want to invite you to tune in next week. Share this podcast with somebody. Just share it. Like literally just send it to them. Text it to them. Email it to them. Uh, give it to them on social media. Whatever you got to do. But this is an amazing conversation where all of us could be challenged to take our life to a whole new level and a whole new dimension. So thank you for tuning in. Our announcer is going to come back and share some more details and information with you. I look forward to having you join us next week uh, for another conversation about habits and lifestyle adjustments for a new year. With all of that being said, you know how I end every single week. Live wisely. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of the Wise Idea Podcast with Christopher J. Harris. We hope you enjoyed our time together. If you did and would like additional resources and information, you can find the previous episodes, show notes, featured guest information, and more at www.thewiseideapodcast.com. We also invite you to join the conversation on social media. The Wise Idea Podcast is on Twitter and Facebook. Find us at The Wise Idea and at our Facebook group, The Wise Idea Podcast. On Instagram, find us at The Wise Idea Podcast. Our host is also on social media. You can find him regularly on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Pinterest, all located at CJ Harris One. Finally, if you enjoyed what you've heard, Head over to iTunes and or Google Play and leave a rating and review for other listeners to find us. Our podcast is also on Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Thanks again for joining us. We will see you the next time. Live wisely. <laughs>